When you want to run API calls to your Qualys account, you need to have them formatted in a Base64 format. While there is documentation on that process, it's not always clear exactly how to do that. So in this video, I want to help clear some of that confusion by performing a step-by-step -step of the credential conversion process and putting the credentials into a couple of use case scenarios when doing API calls via CLI. If you're working with Power BI, you can refer to the other videos on this channel that include the use of Base64 encoded credentials. Now, if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Qualys has a couple of places that it discusses how to create and use Base64 encoded credentials, but sometimes that can be confusing when there's no explicit walkthrough of the process. So for example, in this article, it talks about creating the actual encoded username on the base64encode.org website. So let's walk through that together. This is intended to be the username, colon, and then the password. And I think the at symbol here in their example might throw people off, but this is intended to be the whole password right here. So username, colon, password, pretty straightforward once you understand that. And if we copy that, base64encode.org on that website here, I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to leave everything else default and just say encode. And here we have the encoded credential. So now when we talk about putting in usernames and passwords in base64 encoded format, you have to prefix it with basic and then you put in that encoded credential. So let's show you a notepad here where I have a curl command that we're going to run in CLI. There's some older documentation in Qualys that lays out some different header information that you need to send in but that's now incorrect and just hasn't been updated yet. So if we take this example, we're doing a curl command with our username and password with the X requested with curl to this API URL. And in this case, we're going to be gathering the QVS score for this CVE. All right. So now let's take this and this is all one line. Let me zoom out or make the text smaller so we can see that it is actually one line. All right, so we're gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that in. Obviously it's not gonna work because I use the example username and password. So if I take that command and submit it with working credentials, I'll get the appropriate output, which is a QVS data and the associated details like the contributing factors and the exploit maturity. We can also do it with multiple CVEs. There we go. And actually what I found is I could submit over 500 CVEs in a single command and not hit the URI limit error for sending too much data in a request at one time. And that's it. That's the end of this video. I hope it was useful and stay tuned for more videos to come. Cheers, everybody.